Hey guys, what's up? This is Noah here, your uh, favorite local neighborhood scientist. And I guess I'm a science channel now because a bunch of my recent uploads have been about science. So uh, I guess I'm doing science now. I've tried starting a science channel and didn't really work out. So I guess I'm gonna try it on my main channel. It's kind of weird converting from, you know, like gaming to, you know, science. But yeah, today's video is about Mars, so I'm not going to say anything else. We're just going to go ahead and get right in. So as we all know, humans are a very expansionist species. We've climbed the highest mountain on our planet. We've sunk to the very deepest part of the ocean. We've essentially colonized every piece of land that there is to colonize on Earth. And we even have a space station that orbits the Earth so that humans can live in space. And we have even managed to land on our natural satellite representing the furthest a human has ever been away from our planet. So it's no surprise that we are already trying to send humans to Mars this very century. Now Mars has been a particular point of interest for many decades because of the similarities it shares with Earth. I mean we've already sent so many rovers and spacecraft there since the 60s so how hard could it be to send actual humans to Mars? Well, if you do the research and the math, you will actually find out that landing humans on Mars is a very, very difficult task. And there are multiple problems we are going to have to overcome and face before we can actually do that. So the first challenge that we will need to overcome about getting to Mars is, you know, actually getting to Mars with humans on board. Now, since the Earth and Mars are at varying distances from the Sun, they also vary in their orbits, and they also are drastically changing distances from each other all the time. Now, on average, Mars is about 140 million miles away from the Earth, which is not very ideal for a mission with actual people on board. At their closest point in orbit, called opposition, the two planets are usually about 38 million miles from each other, but at their furthest point in orbits from each other, they can be as far as 252 million miles away from each other, which also is not very ideal for a crewed mission. Now, the best time to usually launch to Mars when NASA sends rovers or spacecraft there is during opposition, as aforementioned, is when the two planets are the closest to each other in their orbits. Now, Mars opposition only occurs every 26 months. So this means if we miss the launch window, we will have to wait another 26 months to try again. At a so let's assume that we solved the problem of how to get to Mars. The next task that we will need to overcome is actually landing safely on the planet. Now, when NASA sent the Perseverance rover back in 2021, it actually entered the Martian atmosphere at over 12,000 miles per hour and it needed a huge supersonic parachute and retro rockets to slow it down enough for a safe landing. This is also mentioning that on average, it takes about 11 minutes for a signal to reach the Earth from Mars. And this is at light speed communication, which is the fastest means of communication that we know of. This also means that if anything goes wrong during the landing on Mars, mission control back on Earth won't hear about it for 11 minutes, and they will have to wait another 11 minutes to actually correct the error in the land. So assuming that we actually do get humans safely onto the surface of Mars, we need to understand how to get them to survive for an extensive period of time. Now you might have heard that Mars is actually very similar to Earth in many ways, and that is in some ways true, with large valleys and large mountains and polar ice caps, and only a day that's about 40 minutes longer than Earth's. But the truth is actually much different because Mars is actually a cold, hostile, and radioactive desert where the atmosphere is very thin and toxic. So our colonists will need breathable oxygen and drinkable water. Now, this is not very ideal since the Martian atmosphere is over 95% carbon dioxide with only small trace amounts of oxygen left in the atmosphere but fortunately there is water in the form of ice at mars's north pole so if we can unfreeze that the ideal not the ideal the idea of drinkable water on mars is not very far-fetched but despite this the problems don't end there because despite the incredibly thin atmosphere on mars which is a hundred times thinner than the atmosphere on earth 
Mars does actually have winds that can pick up dust, and the dust on Mars is actually electrostatically charged, meaning that it can stick to just about anything outside of a Martian habitation base. And to make things worse, the soil on Mars contains deadly perchlorate salts, and it's actually toxic to humans, and f constant exposure can actually be fatal. But a valuable solution has actually been proposed here. The idea is that spacesuits actually stay outside of the Mars base so that they never truly enter the interior and get perchlorate salts all over the base. But this doesn't solve the fact that the average temperature on Mars is usually about negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit, with temperatures at nighttime dropping as low as negative 120, which is actually enough to freeze a person's skin on contact. But this doesn't mean that the sun has no effect on the planet, because without an extensive magnetosphere like Earth's, half of incoming radiation from space actually reaches the ground. Just three years on the surface of Mars is actually enough to expose an astronaut to the radiation imposed on ISS astronauts for their entire careers. This increases cancer risks and can develop cell mutations. But again, a viable solution has actually been proposed here, and the solution is that the base can actually be covered in layers of ice and dust so that it actually blocks out some, not all, of the incoming radiation from space. So even if all of these problems can be solved, there is one problem that does not have a solid solution yet, and that is that Mars only has about 38% of Earth's surface gravity, meaning that the gravity on Mars is 38% of what it is on Earth. This can decrease bone density and muscle mass, which can lead to weakness in the limbs when the, when the astronauts return home to Earth from their extended stay on the planet. So for now, until we come up with a viable solution, the crew on Mars is going to have to exercise to keep their muscles and limbs in healthy shape. So basically, in summary, if humans do ever want to go to Mars, we're going to have to overcome some pretty huge challenges. But the reward for doing so is going to be worth it, with potential cities lighting up the night skies on Mars from orbiters above, and humans finally coming the interplanetary species that it always wanted to.